Welcome to the training everybody, I'm TJ with ShopBot Tools. Today we're going to be looking at cutting a one board project. So you can see here we have a 24 inch long piece of red oak on our ShopBot desktop model. And we'll go through zeroing out the different bits, looking in the VCar Pro, and this is the project that we're going to get towards the end of the tutorial. So you can see we'll look at uh, changing our three different bits, we're going to look in the software with the fluting tool path, we're going to have bit changes, different collet sizes, and then we'll also look at material thickness so the parts can match together. And then also when we're setting up our file, how to get parts that are tabbed close to each other but not too close, and how to nest things in and fit everything into a one board project. So let's step back and get going with today's training on a one board project. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the file that we created for the coaster set and this is it completed and we're going to delete this all and start from scratch but I want you to see where we're going to get to with the drawing file and as we go through going back and forth between the drawing file and looking out on the shop bot and seeing it cut we will see that we have gone through three different bit changes you can see there's things here with layers we'll talk about the spacing between the parts. We'll also look down here with offset lines and if we're going to be using the fluting tool path how we would get a little bit larger width for our material thickness. So with that being said here's what it looks like in just a few minutes we'll have a very new one of our own. So file, we'll create a new file here and start from scratch. So we did this first project out of just a 1x6 that you could get from your local lumber yard. And I cut it down to 24 inches long. And that way it'll fit on all sizes of your shop bots. And it was 5.5 wide. And the material thickness on this took a set of digital calipers and it actually measured out to be 0.51 inches. So the next question would be where do we want a zero? We are doing a couple different types of cuts here. We're doing a through cut for the end product. We're doing pocketing to a certain depth. We're also going to be doing a V-carve down inside the pocket. So just for this example I chose to zero my Z to the material surface. We really could have gone either route in this method but uh, that's just the one I'm going to choose and go with today. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate hit OK and here is our work surface which is our one board our XY origin is down in the bottom left corner. I'm going to go ahead and start by drawing the first coaster and then we will array that out. We'll draw the coaster base and then what we'll do is we'll go as we tool path each one we'll go back and forth between the shop bot and the software so you can see how they're cut. So with any design you want to start out by measuring what it is that you're looking to do. I measured around a few of the coffee cups that sit around here at our shop and the maximum size for the cup diameter was just under 3 inches. So I'm going to make it oversized a little bit, which I'm also going to have a larger circle with a border around it so that larger size circle is actually inside of it. So I, it doesn't matter where I start. My first outside circle I want is 4 inches. And I'm just going to give that a 4 inch diameter. And like I said, the coffee, coffee cup itself is only around 3 inches in diameter. So what I'm going to do is take the 4 inch circle and I'm going to offset that in approximately 3 eighths. And that's just giving this the border. And inside of that border is where I'm going to pocket down. So 3 eighths of an inch is my 0.375. I want to go inwards from that circle and I offset that. So there's the actual coaster. The outside 4 inch, it comes in 3 eighths for the... And then just inside here, I can show you with the measurement here, I've got three and a quarter. So again, our coffee cups around the shop are around three inches. That gives me a little bit of edge around there for the coffee cup to sit in. You don't have to perfectly set it straight down. So there would be the coaster. And what I could do at this point is you know array these over and have my four. But to make them spruce up a little bit nicer, I'd like to cut in a decorative groove. And what I'd like to do is get one coaster exactly the way I want it before I copy and paste those. Otherwise, if you have multiple parts that you want to do the same thing to, you'll have to do the same working here with your objects and vectors times four or however many pieces that is. I'm going to give these offsets a little bit different size. So I will select the inside of my lip. 
I'll go back down to my offset. And what's nice about this here and the offset vectors is if I wanted to go in 7 16 I can always type in 7 divided by 16 equals and that will change that to the fraction that I need. And if I have select new selected, what you'll see here, when I click offset, it selects in the new one. So I needed three of those, one, two, and three. So at this point, I now have my outside cutout, the inside of my pocket, and I have my three lines in here for the decorative V-groove. But with them all being the same color, it's kind of confusing to see which one is for what purpose. So we'll go ahead next and put them on layers. You can add layers a couple different ways. You have the layer option up here along the top. You have a layer tab along the bottom. And I also like to just use my mouse where I can right here, right click, and I can right click on this and say move to layer, a new layer. And what I'm going to do is call this one my pocket because everything inside of this is going to be pocketed out. Go ahead and give this a different color, make it a little easier to see on the screen. I can also make this, if I wanted to make this active, I could, but I'm not going to be working on that layer anymore, so I'm not going to click that. Invisible, meaning do I want to see it, which I do right now. So there's this one, and then I right click on my other, and I move to layer, and I'll call this a new layer as well, and we're just going to call this our V grooves. And again, I like to give these different colors. It's easier to, when I'm working with multiple things on the screen. And as you can see, we're working through our layer list up here. I'm even going to call this one here my working layer. That one I know is always a work in progress. The one that's highlighted in black is the active one. The light bulb is if you want them turned on. Maybe you didn't want to see the V grooves right now. There are just too many lines on the screen for you lining up and setting up this project. So you can always turn these off. But I'm making a point of before I click out of the layer menu is my working layer is what's highlighted. Meaning that's the one that is active. I can also see it up here because I'm going to be working on other things right now like creating the base. And then I'm going to go back to my drawing tab where I will start creating the base. So I have one coaster. I'm going to create the base. And then what we'll try to do is nest all the parts together in this one board. All right, the next thing we're going to do is set up the base. So up here, I'm going to come up and draw a rectangle command. I'll just get it started. Then I can come fill this in. And with this one, we want a 4 inch by a 4 inch. Instead of it just being a square right here, let's go ahead and change the uh, corner type and instead of external we'll go internal just to give it a different look we'll go 3 8 of a diameter apply and that just gives it a little bit more of a decorative edge so there we've created a 4x4 four four rectangle that we're going to use as the base and the next thing that we need to do is create the line that we're going to use for our fluting toolpath to follow the coaster diameter down into the base so to make the slots for the four coasters, we'll have to use the draw polyline. And then the toolpath that we use is the flute. And if you haven't used the flute yet, what you can do is set this up for the different type, which is at this point, we want it to ramp down and back up. So what we need to figure out now is how long of a flute to create. Uh, we only want our depth to go around 3 8 of an inch. I don't want the coaster to go all the way through the base. And to do this, just to save a little time in this video, uh, I went up here and I created a, a mock-up of what we're about to do. So let me bring this down a little bit closer to the job. And I just brought up and copy and pasted the coaster. This right here, the base, we're looking at the side view of it right here as the half inch. Uh, here is the 3 8 deep that I had in the fluting toolpath. And then what I did was I measured uh, with the measuring tool the line in between R2, brought that down, and then I also brought in a circle on the end here to show how wide that would end up making this with a half inch end mill that we're going to use. So the length of the line only needs to be from the center of the two bits. You know, this line transfers straight up here to where the circle diameter hits the top of the base. But if I made my line that full length all the way across, 
then my flute would be even longer because the way the fluting tool pass works it's going to go off the center of the bit where it plunges and in this case we're going to use the half inch end mill because that's the same bit that we use for pocketing down here so that's where this little drawing comes up it's just a coaster this is the base thickness right here this is the approximate distance i want for the fluting depth and then here instead of it being the full length across I had to shorten the line by the radius of the bit diameter that I'm using. So to draw this one, I'm going to switch back over to Drawing Tool Pass. And if I measure this here, just to show you this line, this line actually measures 1.877 length. So instead of just copy and pasting this, I'm going to come down here to where our base is. And I will take Draw Polyline. And I can start by one click of my left mouse. And when I bring this out in length, it has a lot of snap to dimensions. But what I want to do is actually want to give it some specific. I want to give it a 90 degree angle, so it's straight up and down. And I wanted to give it that length of 1.877. And then when I click Add, there becomes that line. And it's going to allow me to keep adding to it, which I don't want to do in this case. So I will click Finish and click Close to get out of there. And since this line is centered in this base, I will select my line first, hold the shift key on the keyboard, select my base, and I would like to center this vertically with the align objects by doing this so right here. And again, just doing a little bit of math, I've got four coasters at approximately a half inch a piece. What is the spacing I would want to do for these? Uh, I would just go do a little trial and error till I get the one that looks right for me in the software. But what I'm going to do is select my line, and I could do an array here where I make it three copies. Uh, I'm just going to go back to the offset, and I'm just going to do a offset to the right because my little square here looks up the line, and I want to go to the right side of that line. And for this case here, we'll just go 0.875, select new, allows me to click on it, and hold it four times. Again, I could have done this with the uh, lineal array, but I'm going to grab these three. And what I can do with these now is center them inside of my base. And there is my base, and there is my coaster. And I'm almost ready to start tool pathing and start cutting this. The next thing I need to do is get everything nested inside of this one board. All right, I like to bring in some layout lines first. I'm going to come up here to the ruler. I'm going to drag one down so I'm about a half of an inch in from my point 0.5. So I'm from down here from 0, I'll go up to point 0.5. And I'm going to leave a little bit larger border on the ends just so I have an area so I know I have some room for some screws. And I like to try to fit my parts with inside these. And this little border on the, around the corner, me by just dragging these layout lines in, ju it's just a reference for when I go to toolpath this so I can uh, um, keep a board around there so I know that's where I've got room for hold down screws and I've also got room for my bit to make the cut and the other thing I noticed here I did not put was these last four guys on a new layer so we'll move these to a new layer and we'll call this our grooves and again I can give these a different color if I'd like and here we have not picked the green yet so I'll put them on the green layer okay so at this point we're ready to start uh, I'm by, just by eye right now, I'm going to move this one over to the edge. I would like to center it vertically in the job size, so vertical clicking here. And for you guys at home that haven't, that don't see your line objects, if these aren't showing up, just come up here to underneath transform objects and look right here where it says align selected objects. Click on that. You probably don't have this checked. Without the show common tool pass on drawing tab, they're not going to show up. So by clicking on this, clicking on show common, now there they are. So when you use these options here, they're just real helpful to have. So I've got it centered vertically and horizontally. I'm going to just bring it over to approximately one inch with my arrow keys on the keyboard. And let's go ahead now and make four of these arrayed across. So to array these, let me just select this, go into my lineal array here, and the brings me my overall size 
In the X, I would like to have four of these. In the Y, I only need one, so I will leave that there. And then I need to, I can figure out if I'm going to do an offset or a gap. I'd like to do a gap of approximately a half of an inch. Since I'm only working in the X, I only need to set that. I don't want these grouped, and I'll hit copy. All of the stuff that you see, array copies, any of these other ones, if you need more in-depth on these, again, underneath the help, help contents, tutorial, browser, all that stuff's up there in more depth. So this I want to copy, and I can see there's my four. They get copied along. And when I click out of there, I see it copied them. It kept things on the layers. The only thing I know is going to be pretty tight on this is if I'm using a quarter inch bit to cut this out and I used a half inch gap in between, I'm going to be tight, which is what we saw from the original picture of this coaster set. So just to give it a little bit more space, I could bring in my border on my ends. I like to leave those with around an inch so I know I've got some room for screws, but I could move these out if I needed to just a little bit just to give these end ones a little bit more. And again, you could sit here and adjust stuff all day long back and forth with your different vectors. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move some of these vertically up. I want to be careful there where I just moved one. I better edit undo and make sure I have everything selected. And I'm just going to move some of these down. That way my center line's a little bit off and it gives me a little bit more support in the middle. And again, just a personal preference. And it's just, I got more, a little bit more space in between my edges my parts and everything is laid out the way I want it. So I've got my pockets on one layer, I've got my V grooves on another, I've got these grooves on another, and then the only thing I didn't put on layers was my outside ends and then I could just last grab all those, select them and put them on a different layer. But since I've been working here, everything right now is currently move to the layer I've been working on so you know, if I turn off the working layer I can see that things have been on that layer we're on layer one right now that's where I last started using this so a layer management I could come in here and really spend some time and that's a whole nother training that we could do on layer management but I know right now I just want to take these last four pieces five pieces which are my cutouts if I select all those and I right click and I want to move to layer, new layer, <clears throat> cut out, great. And then any of these other layers that I'm not currently wanting to work with, my working layer, I will turn off my layer one. I can turn that off. And since I had done a copy and a paste with this item, it is still on a layer that we don't want it to be so we don't want it to accidentally get tool path so I will move that to our working layer and get rid of that so my layers are cleaned up my part is the way I am and what I'm gonna do next is go step by step through tool pathing this going out to the shop bot and cutting it and working our way back and forth through these next few tool paths the first thing that we need to do is pocket down the inside of these coasters so I'm gonna switch over here to the tool path side I'm going to select a pocket, and I'm actually going to do a little bit of thinking right now. I'm going to do the pocket tool path first with a half inch end mill. Then we're going to do a flute. So the flute here to do a cutout. So I need to think about my different bits. I got a V90, I got a half inch end mill, and I got a quarter inch end mill. So I'm going to select these and set these up in a way that's going to minimize my bit changes. At the end, you'll see where if you didn't do this in the order, you can always change them with the arrow keys. So pocket tool path. I'm not going to worry about selecting my vectors right now. I will use the vector selection mode at the end. Uh, for this cut depth, I did want to go 0.1875. And for the bit, it, again, it uses the bit that it has the bit selected that you used last time. So I just got done cutting this. It has the same bit. So I'll go back under my wood half inch straight and verify that's the right one. What I did for the video though is I actually changed the passes to two passes. So instead of going that full 0.1875, I broke it into two passes. And that's just because it's a big half inch bit. In this example, I cut it into half inch 
oak and I didn't want to just plunge that big bit down in there too hard and fast and it's just one of those things where I'm going to be conservative the first few times I cut it I don't want to sacrifice damaging my bit or edge quality and then as I learn my machine and what I'm able to do I can find out if I'm able to ramp that up in speed or passes so just for the training example I kept it safe with two passes um, you can't set it up to do a raster or an offset uh, typically with red oak, though what I do, you see in these trainings, is we'll raster back and forth. But I did want to just leave it as an offset to show you for this video that uh, cut direction on the offset will do just as great of a cutout for what we're looking to do here. I also added a ramp. Instead of taking that half inch bit and just jamming it down into the material, we'll use a ramp where we'll see out on the shop bot where it eases itself down to the cut depth before it starts going at full speed. And then here for vector selection mode, I will hit selector. And what I'm looking here for is, are my vectors open or closed? Which ones? If I don't have closed selected, I'm not going to be able to select those red circles. So I would need to make sure that those are selected and then over here that I have the right one selected. So I'm not working with any open in this case. I've got closed. I just have my pocket, what's on my pocket layer. That's where layer management is key. Any of the other drawing stuff that I had on there would be selected right now, which I'd have to scan around and try to find where that is. So that's why I shut it off and moved it all off that layer. So with everything being set here, I have four vectors that are going to get pocketed to 0.1875, and I'm even going to call that pocket 0.1875, 1875, and when I hit calculate, I will see what that's going to do. I can see the turquoise here for the ramp. I can see the blue lines are my cut. I can see there's two sets of blue lines because there's two passes. And the reason my red line goes back here instead of a lot of your default ones that go to right here is if I close this here up underneath material setup and setup, I actually use a home start position that is not the default 00, zero and I actually have it at 2418 because this demo is on the desktop and at the end of the cut for camera purposes and for operator purposes of getting the to the board, the shop bot will now manually move all the way back to 2418, which is what I have set here. So let me go ahead and hit calculate. And again, just preview it here in the preview. Make sure this is what we want because we're about to go out to the shop bot and see this cut. I can see that ramp. I can see the multiple passes. I could have went in here also back to the pocket tool path. I'm seeing it started over here and worked its way. I could have went in here to vector selection order and I could have ordered it from left to right if that's the way I wanted to have done it or right to left uh, depending on how I want to speed this up. So let's go out on the shop bot and see this first cut. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is get the right bit in and get it zeroed for our pocketing tool path. Remember always when changing collets, pull the collet and the nut apart. Spring them back together after you've blown them out. When you're installing your bit, get it tight by hand. And then one more pretty good oomph. You don't need to over tighten it. Notice here we put an X on the board since we're doing multiple bit changes because we're going to zero in the same spot. Watch out for screw heads. Keep that off to the side. That would throw off your Z height. So the half inch end mill is in. It's been zeroed. And you can see it coming out and start doing the pocketing tool path. There's that ramp that we added in. Instead of plunging that bit down inside there, what it's doing is it's making it's easing itself down in. And then you can see here as it goes around this type of cut, it's not a big deal going against the grain. And it works itself down with the two layers. So it gets done with the first pocket and it's going to work itself over from left to right. And again, there's the ramp. It has two pass depths, and then this would be something that, you know, cut one or two of these. These are great, and now I'm going to really go in and dial in feeds and speeds to make it more of an efficient file if I was going to be cutting multiple ones of these. So just as you can see this cutting with the half-inch end mill, also start thinking in mind, what's our next cut? We need to do the fluting tool path, and then to do the fluting tool path, we're going to use that same bit. So let's go back to the software. 
calculate our toolpath since we're not changing bits we don't need to re-zero what we've left is just enough room over on the edge for our base we'll go load that toolpath and then we'll just continue on with the same bit in the software without having to re-zero anything and make that next cut all right the next one we're going to set up is our fluting toolpath so we'll exit out of that go back to 2d view and here is our four flutes that we want so here's a good one to keep in mind as we move forward Notice our material is 0.51 thick. And if we're going to cut our flute with a half inch bit, our material isn't going to quite fit down inside of these flutes. So the first thing we need to do is run the fluting toolpath with the current bit that we have. And then we will come back in the software and do an offset so we can get a little bit wider. We need to do it this way for this type of toolpath. So fluting toolpath. And we said we were going to go approximately 3 3 eighths of an inch deep. Well, I'm going to type in exactly here the 3 eighths that I want. I'm going to verify that I still have the same half inch bit from underneath the wood, which I do have. So I will cancel that one. I want this to ramp from the start and to the end. So back and forth. And I want a nice smooth. So I will call this fluting slots. And I can do the same thing here. But here I actually want open vectors and these I would want on the groove so if I move this over here I can see that I've selected the four that are on the groove and I hit calculate there and now I come in down in here and I look and here I can see my multiple passes where it plunges down in and where it makes the cut preview those visible tool paths and I can see them on the shop bot previewer here in the software and now let's take this out to the shop bot and see this cut the flutes since we didn't do a bit change we can go right over and hit file part load and it'll start running the flute so notice the flute works itself down like a ramp where it goes down to the depth in the center and works its way back up since we selected to have equal uh, both entrance and exit points where it fl flushes down in the center to the flute depth and back out flux again flush to the edge sorry so there's our four flutes but what we have right here that we can see is we're again using material that's 0.51 thick our flutes with that half inch end mill are only 0.5 so if I was to pull if I was to finish completing the cut of one of these coasters to try to put it down inside that groove it's not gonna fit and not and I don't want to have special tooling that's just for you know material that's a little over half of an inch so what we'll do is go back into the software once this has complete, completed its finish of its cut and we'll actually just create a little offset with some lines and to doing that we go back to 2d view we close this and for right now since we've already cut these four in here in the video what I would have to do is offset some new flute lines and then create another fluting slots tool path so let's go do this where I come over here to each one of these lines I don't want them grouped together right now because I'm working with them individually so I can just select them and ungroup them I want to do an offset and since my material is 0.01 larger I'd like it to actually have a little bit of extra tolerance to it so I'm gonna go 0.02 and I will go ahead and just go to the right. Again, I could have done the offset function this way, or I could do it with the lineal array copy and offset. So since they've already been cut in the material for this example, I can't select these all and center them back into the base. So I will have to, as hard as it is sometimes for me when I want things to be perfect, I will know that these slots are 0 0.02 off being center of the base. But no one's eye is going to catch that one while they're using them in the uh, den or the living room. So for here right now what I would do is I could create a copy of this fluting slots where I could duplicate it and instead of having the four original ones selected I would just go and grab the four off to the right hand side calculate those and then just go run this other fluting toolpath where it's off to the side and that's going to make that groove just a little bit larger so that's what we'll go see in the video next and then we'll come back and actually fix this for future cutting of this file 
So this one here is the flute tolerance. As you can see, we're going to be going back down in the existing groove where it's just cutting a little bit off to the side in this case. So it's just adding that extra 0.02 tolerance. So that gives us the board width plus a little bit extra, you know, for sanding the board down and then putting a finish on it. You want it to come in and out of that groove without rubbing it off the finish. And then you can see it's tested with the scrap piece of the material before it's actually pulled out of there. And since we know this worked this way, instead of having these multiple tool paths, and this is a future project that I want to use, what I'm going to actually do is right click on this fluting slots and I'm going to delete that one, just delete this copy and go back into the existing fluting slots. In this case, I want to have all of these selected. So what it will do is it will select all eight of those vectors, the original ones and the offset ones. But one thing I didn't take into account before I retool path these is I do want to go back and recenter these. So I will swing back to my tool path side and with those selected and I hold the shift key down and I go to center in here, what does it do? It takes all of them and centers it into the objects. So earlier when you saw why were things grouped, that's why these were all selected, these were grouped and now when they're centered in the base material which you'll see it just offset just a little bit but it's just enough that you'll see it it brings that over so now all of the grooves are centered and when I do the fluting of the slots it will do two lines of each but that's how I get the 0.52 or wider groove whatever it may be that's needed wider for doing future slots so there is our fluting slots where we've slotted, we still need to do a bit change next to do our V-carve, where we'll V-carve down inside of our material where we need to do a start depth. To do the V-grooves, this one's actually going to be a profile tool path where we profile a V-90 bit on the line. So in this case, we want to do these blue lines that are on the layer for our V-groove. So the issue we have to remember is inside of this red line, everything is pocketed down. So we need to add in a start depth. If we leave our start depth at 0.0, .0 and whatever tool path that we run here, it's just going to be cutting air here in the middle. So since this material has already been cut down to 0.1875, that's what we need to go ahead and put for a start depth. That's how far down the bit will push down into the material before it starts cutting and then here the cut depth of that cut and for these grooves it's just going to go a little bit more than a sixteenth of an inch so we have something just decorative to look at and I'm going to go ahead and select that V90 bit out of wood and this one here I want to profile on the line and as we work our way through down here I'm not going to set the anything specific up but I am going to go I want closed vectors on the V groove which I can see that it's going to select 12 vectors. I close there and there's my 3, 6, 9, 12. There's my 12 vectors. I want to name this because so I'm starting to get uh, I'm starting to get multiple tools here so I want to name what they are so I can identify them without having to double click on them and I'll turn off the fluting and we can see here that our V groove 90 is down inside of these existing pockets. And if I wouldn't have added that start depth and I would have previewed here, I would have seen, I would not have seen those V90s going down inside that wood. So let's go ahead and run the tool path here where we can see the V groove 90 with a start depth down inside of those existing pockets. And here we are zeroing our bit again, our new V90 is in, watch out for the screw head. Having an X on the plate and an X on the board ensures I'm zeroing in approximately the same material thickness. And here it picks up and now it goes down and there's your start depth. I simulated it right there so you could see it going down and then there's the start depth with the cut depth. So here we are doing our decorative V grooves with a 0.1875 start depth down into the material and there it does doing the three grooves in each one of those. And again that was a profile toolpath on the line with the start depth. The last toolpath we want to set up is the 2D profile cutout. 
So I'm going to go back here, and the last one would be a profile tool path. You zoom into my material that I'm working with here. Uh, we don't have a cut, a start depth this time because we're not starting down in our material. I can always type in T or Z equals to remember what my material thickness is. Uh, on a profile cut, I like to cut a little bit deeper into the material. So 0.51 is material thickness plus 0.02 extra depth to go down into the spoil board equals a cut depth of 0.53. We'll do one more bit change here, and in this case, I'd like to do a quarter inch down cut. I don't want to rip any of the upper veneers. The, the bottom of the board is up against the spoil board. I'm not worried about that blowing out. So I'll use a quarter inch down cut. That's going to be in three passes. Again, if you wanted to, if you knew you're the material that you're working with, you could go plus or minus on your pass depth. Uh, save that for another tutorial on material settings. Uh, here for machine vectors we want to go on the outside I'm going to do a climb cut on this oak and this one here i am going to add tabs because i don't want these parts to come loose there's just these little circles out here and before i even click on the edit tab function what i'll need to do is make sure i have the right vector selected and again you have your selector mode down here where you don't want things on the groove you want them on the cutout there the five vectors are selected and I can go into my edit tabs. I can always use the software to auto generate tabs depending on what settings you have clicked. Sometimes it puts these in places that are not convenient because I really wouldn't want to have to try to hand sand a tab or clean up a tab by hand when my precise ShopBot CNC machine just made that corner perfect. So a lot of times I will delete this and I will think about these tabs from an end user's perspective of where they would have to clean these up. And a lot of times going back and forth with the grain makes it a lot easier. So I'm just manually placing these tabs where I want them. If I don't like them, if I hover back over that tab, if I, I has an X and I can click that away and it will go away. So I'm just going to put two tabs on each in the vertical. And you'll see us removing the tabs at the end. That's a good tab size for what we're using. Uh, again, ramps are nice for spiraling down into the material. If I wanted a nice smooth ramp, I'll just add a little ramp to it. I could do the order of my cut where I wanted the shortest path where it would start on one side and work through. And uh, that's enough settings for what we're looking to do here. And I'm just going to call this all of my through cuts. And I'll give that a 0.25 EM so I know which bit it is. So when you're labeling things here, you'll see what bit did what job. And this message is important here. Yes, I did tell it to cut 0.02 deeper into my material, but stop and verify that you got the right numbers and the right decimal place right here before you hit OK. And now when I go through this, I can see my ramp, I can see my tabs, and I'm verifying everything's the way I want it on this last tool path before I go out to my machine because it's no fun you're this far along in a project have something simple like the forgotten of adding the tabs and, and, and lose all the work that you've done so far so let's head out to the machine and see our very last cut so just like we did before we'll do our third bit change watching out for the screw head Z0 comes down twice we have our quarter inch down cut end mill in place put your Z0 out of the way and then here it is ramping down into our material just helps with bit helps with edge quality it's just nice on the machine and it doesn't add that much time for the little project that we're doing here so it's working the multiple passes to get through it lifts up where the tabs are placed and this end mill is going to just go through and do this final tool path along and you can see here we did get really close we wouldn't want to go much closer with these parts we're really close to the edge we're really close with our cuts in between our coasters so as a one board project we did fit it in there very tight but we're able to putting tabs in the right place adding the ramps and going in here and really dialing this in we're able to get this set this project out of one board without overdoing it so it makes its way through the third coaster Again, all of these, it has the tabs and the ramps. It's working its way down. Our final tool path here is the cutout. We've stayed away from the screw heads by setting this stuff up in the file. 
And what we're going to do as we get towards the end here is then we need to figure before we pull this part off, is it exactly the way we want it? So it's nice to maybe pop a coaster out first and fit it in the groove. Make sure that it's cut the way you want. Once this is, board has been pulled off here, the way we've held it down and the way we've cut it, it's going to be really hard to line it back up, especially with these small tabs that are holding it in place. The next thing that we do with tab removal here, we're using a chisel or a utility knife. Uh, once it's out, you're not going to get that line right back in there. So that's where it's nice to have measured and added the tolerances ahead of time. And I'm just inspecting the material, seeing what board I have left there to deal with for tab cleanup. Pull the screws off. Another way to do it instead of a chisel is to flip this over and use a utility knife. And that's what's nice about putting the tabs going with the grain is it makes them real easy with one hand to push through. And we can notice on the end here where it didn't quite go all the way through. I could have made my material, my last cut, my profile cut go a little bit deeper and it would have gotten rid of that. But that's not bad. That's just a little bit of simple cleanup with the sander. Again, or I could just fix that in the tool path. Sand these up, put a little beveled edge on them, whatever it is that you need to do. Since coasters are going to be usually with a drink that could spill water on them, I chose to use a Minwax spar urethane here because it has you know water repelling characteristics to add it to it, and it looks nice. So there's your completed set of your coaster set using the one board project. Though this may be a simple project, five and a half inches by 24, one board, here we are half hour later looking at a lot of different things that we did to set this up. A lot of different bit changes, toolpath types, layering, things with inside the software for setting this up. So feel free to download this file and mess with this file. There's a lot that we put in here to set this project up. Fluting toolpath, we had to take into account the material thickness and do a little bit of offset. Adding the layers made it very convenient for not only selecting tool paths, but just visualizing the project that it is that we're working on. So spend some time with the software. There's a lot of different things that we use in both the file operation drawing side and over on the tool path side. And then finally, mess with this out on your shop bot. That's what's nice about this on a one board project. Is it's just one board. If something happens, grab another board. But just take your time walking through through this when you cut it just notice where you're zeroing your Z setting it up setting up your different bits going through this saving out your tool paths you have the option of saving them as one file and doing bit changes mid cut or saving multiple tool paths and running multiple files it's your preference but this is just a good introductory one board project of several more of these that we will have coming along to you in the future. So thank you again for everybody today's training and we look forward to seeing you next time.